Hello everyone, welcome to the Study Hacks Institute of GIS and Remote Sensing. Today I will try to discuss a very important topic, mainly how we can easily identify potential fishing zone using remote sensing data in Google Earth Engine. So I will try to explain all of method. I hope after completing this tutorial, you are able to do this type of analysis to identify potential fishing zone. So here you can see this is one kind of paper. So in this paper, they are mainly use here the two parameter, sea surface temperature and chlorophyll concentration. Based on sea surface temperature and chlorophyll, they try to identify potential fishing zone. Okay, and they also make the time series analysis of potential fishing zone. So here you can see this is the study area, and for that they are also make the sea surface temperature for the different time period they are also created okay so they get the modis aqua data from the modis aqua data they take the sea surface temperature and chlorophyll but the data extraction also data extraction from here and compute it the sea surface temperature and also compute the chlorophyll then they are also add with the base map so basically they are using the landsat satellite imagery as a base map and then also extraction of the coastal boundary they are also extract the coastal boundary and further overlay of sea surface temperature and chlorophyll and further they are identify for potential fishing zone so in this paper they are also use this type of uh, method or algorithm and they are uh, identify for potential fishing zone but if you want you can also get the more better performance then not only for the two data if you want you can also use at the more than other data such as chlorophyll A concentration. So here you can see I will add all of data. So basically which data provide you the more enhanced identify for potential fishing zone such as sea surface temperature. We can easily identify basically fish tend to the aggregate their specific temperature range for we can easily get the data for sea surface temperature or SST data. But the chlorophyll A concentration, so basically indicate the phytoplankton presence, the base of the aquatic food chain. We can easily get the data from the Modis Equa or Sentinel, Sentinel 3 ocean color, as well as ocean color, mainly turbidity. Mainly high turbidity may include the nutrient rich water. Data source we can use at the Modis Equa or Sentinel 2 multi spectral instrument, we can also use. And also sea surface salinity and current. So basically convergence zones and upwelling regions attract the fish so we can easily identify for sea surface salinity and current using this data mainly copernicus marine environment monitoring service as well as thermal front abrupt temperature change in the water surface and signal feed zone so here you can see if you want you can also use this type of uh, data such as sea surface temperature or chlorophyll or dissolved oxygen as well as also ocean current or upwelling zone and also sea surface height anomaly and also turbidity and bathymetry so if you want to use this type of data then we also get the more better accuracy for, to identify fishing potential zone and you can use this type of data so modis aqua water data for SS, uh, sea surface temperature and chlorophyll sentinel 3 uh, or we can use high resolution sst or ocean color data then global high resolution SST, we can also get it. Copernicus Marine Service, uh, we can also get from here the ocean current data. Okay, so this type of data we can easily use in Google Earth Engine, and further we can easily identify for where we find out the low potential zone or medium or high. So now I talk about this code, and further I also explain how I can use this code and create this type of map. So in this code here you can see i already write the code so basically in this case i try to identify for potential zone of fishing such as this type of red color indicating about that high potential zone yellow is the medium and blue is the very low low potential zone of fishing so i want to just do it for the total five years and in this case i just add the two parameter mainly sea surface temperature and chlorophyll okay sea surface temperature and chlorophyll i want to use but if you want you can also add here the chlorophyll or turbidity 
or ocean current or other parameters then we also get the more accurate potential zone for fishing we can easily get it when you want to add the more parameter but process is the same further tutorial also discuss about that how we can easily also add it the other parameter which enhance the identify more accurate uh, for potential zone of fishing so here i identify for year of 2015 this is the year of then 2016 then 2017 18 19 and 20 okay so i just identify for total uh, five years for a specific month so i take the data mainly um, chlorophyll data and sea surface temperature data i take only for the one month so now i try to explain about that then you can also try so first of all i simply split my study area so i take this type of boundary suppose i take this type of coastal area for this bay of bengal and now i want to uh, try to identify basically indian ocean i try to identify for this study area and now i try to identify for 2015 to 2020 and i analyze only for the month of june okay so i take that six for june and i make the sequence mainly 2015 to 2020 and then i also define some color plated so basically this is the color plated for chlorophyll then sea surface temperature and potential fishing zone i simply make the three classification blue yellow and red blue is the blue yellow is the medium and red is the high potential zone i identify and further in this case i want to use the data basically modis equa l3 smi data and from this data we can easily access the sea surface temperature okay and filter bounds with my study area same process i also call the modis equa l3 smi data from this data we can also access for the chlorophyll concentration and i filter with my boundary so now further we try to make the one year only i create a function in this function we try to calculate for one year basically one month uh data for chlorophyll and also the surface temperature we okay, calculate it for average okay we create this data so this is my data and in this data i also set some condition okay suppose in this case i try to keep the condition to identify for high potential zone i make the one class for the medium potential zone as well as also others i make as a low potential zone so here you can see i take the sea surface temperature greater than equal 26 degrees celsius and sea surface temperature less than equal 30 and chlorophyll greater than equal 0 0.1 and chlorophyll less than equal 3 i consider the one class for high potential then same process i also put this type of condition but this type of it it not fixed so we, you check some paper so basically for the fish potential temperature or fish potential chlorophyll range then you can easily get this type of data so in this case i just use this type of things for the temperature which is uh, more concentrated to the fish and you can also check this paper then you also get the more better idea so where we can find out that um, fish concentration paper uh, temperature you can easily get it so you also try to read the paper then you also set or other paper is also available let's try to check it and now we try to call our image collection and add with our image okay so basically add all of images from year of 2015 to 2020 it's this variable is storing and further i just try to calculate the average average for each year month of june okay and i further i want to display this type of things at the same time so just i try to display all of map here you can see this is the map for year of 2015 then i already added for the map for you can see this is the mean lst sst mainly mean sea surface temperature uh, this is the map for mean chlorophyll and further we also try to identify for uh, potential zone we try to make the classification based on our range so we find out this type of blue color indicating about the low potential zone yellow is the medium and red is the high potential zone for fishing also 2016 we find out this type of condition and all of the years mainly same month month of june 2016 month of june so we can either identify this type of place uh have that uh, high potential for red yellow is the medium blue is the low potential then 2017 then 18 then 19 
and 20. So we find out this type of result but when you want to need the more accurate result then you must need to add more other data such as chlorophyll A concentration, ocean color for turbidity, sea surface salinity or current or sea surface temperature, okay, thermal front, okay, all of data when you want to uh, make and then you can easily identify for more accurate potential zone for fishing. Okay, so basically this is the process. Okay, and further I also try to develop this type of process to get the more accurate data. Okay, so in the meantime, I also give you an announcement for our upcoming online training program. So basically, uh, this training program will be start on 13 December. So now our registration is the open, and in this online training program, you will learn everything. Such as you can learn any any types of remote sensing analysis after completing this full online training program. So in this online training program, I just focus for the beginners who don't have any knowledge about the coding, mainly JavaScript or Python, or who don't have any knowledge about the Google Earth Engine. So I hope after completing this full training program, you are able to do any types of remote sensing analysis very quickly and efficiently. And in this online training program, you can check all of course content from my website. As well as I already added all of information in the video description you can simply check it and when you want to join this online training program you also get some benefits such as you can get the course e certificate after submitting all of assignment you can get the all of materials mainly slide PDF as well as you also get the practice code as well as also recorded class and you also get the lifetime teaching support it's very important as a beginners because as a beginners when you want to learn the Google Earth engine then you face a lot of problem so that's why you need the continuous support so if you want to join this online training program regarding this online training pro uh, content when you face any problem you can get the lifetime teaching support so basically our class will be start on the 13 december for the upcoming best and if you want to join with 50 percent discount as soon as possible simply complete your registration and join our google classroom and also whatsapp group so basically this class total four hours for each day and i take the class this time period gmt plus six and um, we take the class only for the two days in a week mainly friday and saturday in a week and uh, you can easily contact in this email or also contact with this whatsapp number for your book your seat i already added all of information in the video description so if you are interested to join with 50 percent discount as soon as possible contact and then book your seat so today is no more thank you for watching that stay happy stay safe